So sadly, the number one song in America is Fergie's Glamorous. And even though eyebrow rings are, you know, outdated from the 90s and she pissed her pants, we're gonna try to listen to the song without vomiting. Before Jeffree Star, we're clocking over 16 million subscribers on YouTube, over 15 million on Instagram, and almost 6 million on Twitter at the time of this recording. I think that was like $5 coming out the bottle. Before Jeffree Star would build his own empire and ultra successful makeup line, Jeffree Star Cosmetics. Hey everyone, it's Jeffree Star, and since everyone thinks I'm a self centered asshole, you should too. Before Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson's conspiracy makeup collection of 1 million units would sell out in just 30 minutes, setting records. Oh my god. It's breathtaking when I stare at him. I kind of want to cry a little bit. I don't, I'm not even just saying that. <laughs> it just looks so crazy. So oh, I can't god, believe it. The diet before Jeffree Star would be dubbed the fifth highest earning YouTuber both in 2018 and 2019, earning an estimated $17 million per year. These days, Jeffree remains one of the highest paid YouTubers according to Forbes and has made himself quite the fortune. Now his net worth is estimated at $50 million, and as we know Jeffrey, well he's never shy to flaunt his lavish lifestyle. Now Jeffrey is probably one of, if not the most successful spawns of internet fame. Now either way, he's an original, and he's been famous on the web since way back in 2005 in the MySpace days. Now Jeffrey is one unique celebrity, and although he identifies as androgynous, for the sake of this video, I'm gonna refer to him as he. The last time we took a shot at this video, I just went with Jeffrey, and the whole thing turned out a little awkward. Plus, this is a story worth taking a second look at, as Jeffrey has since spoken more openly about his childhood, and he's given us more info about his mom. The imagery that pops up when you Google my mother is a lie. The name that pops up when you Google my mom and pictures of us, all of it is a lie. Up until Christmas time of last year, I had not spoken to my mother, my birth mom, in 10 years. Yeah, it's a bit of a tearjerker, so buckle up. What's going on guys, it's your boy Michael McCredden documenting the life and career of Jeffree Star prior to fame, here for you of course and before they were famous. Now some recent drops on this channel include Brother Nature, Shane Dawson, Ashniko, and plenty more. As always, be sure to let us know who's next in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys after the intro. Hey, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Boom! Jeffrey Starr was born Jeffrey Lynn Steininger Jr. on November 15th, 1985 in Huntington Beach, California. So at the time of this recording, he's 34 years old. Now Jeffrey's father named Jeff, he passed away when Jeffrey was only six years old. Now in his family, there's a history of alcohol abuse, which explains why Jeffrey doesn't drink. Now if you're a frequent visitor of Jeffrey's Instagram page, you'll notice that he's often sipping Red Bull and the man likes to smoke a little bit of weed. He's never had a sip of alcohol in his entire life. In fact, he stated, I've never tried alcohol before, which people don't believe. I've just smoked weed. I've never tried Coke, ecstasy, nothing. I've never sipped a beer, never tried wine. I'm gonna shock everybody with a fun fact. I don't drink alcohol and I've never drank before. So I know a lot of you at home are probably like, yeah, right. I've never drank before. Now Jeffrey was raised by his mom, but we recently found out that the woman that we thought was his mom all these years, well, it isn't actually her. And the woman that I have been posting for the last five years is not my mother. It's crazy because you put us together, I'm about to show some pictures, but if when you put us next to each other, so many people were like, you guys look identical. You guys are twins. You guys look exactly alike. Oh my God. And it's been a lie this whole time. And it started out as like a cute white lie. And I'm sure all of you are wondering, who is this woman? Her name is Lori and she is my actual aunt. Her name is Lori like it says, but yeah, that's Jeffrey's aunt. Now she was like a mother to him considering he was never that close with his real mom. And although these days the two are in touch after not speaking for 10 years. Sadly, when Jeffrey got a hold of his real mom, well, he found out that she had not been living her best life over the years that they had been apart. Now, Jeffrey, he had no idea until they spoke that she was living out of her car, homeless, and that she had been dealt a bad hand. I started to obviously help um, her become not homeless anymore, but to mentally unravel the layers of living and being homeless, of having so much fear and having so many horrible things happen to her. I don't, it's hard to fathom. But besides his family secrets, Jeffrey knew who he was from an early age, or at least he had a pretty good idea. Now he started experimenting with makeup at the age of 12, and even as a young boy, he was starting to discover that he was different. 
Now, Jeffrey, he had never identified himself as gay, and he doesn't want to be put in any box, he told Paper Magazine. I'm attracted to both genders, and I have been with transgender people, and I just don't even know if there's a name for it. And even with all these new labels out there, I still am just like, I'm Jeffrey, and I'm attracted to whoever I want to be. But you probably know that at the time of this recording, his boyfriend is Nathan Schwantz, and it's been over four years since Nathan slid into Jeffrey's DMs and locked him down. Apparently there's all sorts of straight men or married men that are sliding into Jeffrey's DMs on the daily. I found that out on his Instagram. Anyway. I want Nate to talk about like when he met me, he owned seven t-shirts and worked at a pet store. And he didn't know what Gucci was when he met me on a real level. Like 100% had no idea what that stuff was. Like Gucci, Louis, Givenchy, like. He's a small town Michigan kid. They don't have yeah, that out no, there, honey. Gucci's have... two hours away. Yeah. <laughs> By junior high, Jeffrey was already wearing makeup and flashy outfits to school. Now, as soon as he finished high school, he moved to LA from his hometown of Orange County, California. Now, once he moved out on his own and made some money through makeup, modeling, and music gigs, not to mention he was already on the scene in a big way thanks to a fake ID, well, Jeffrey teamed up with Hustler for a year and worked with bands on their music videos. Now, when MySpace launched in 2003, Jeffrey, he wasted no time and used the platform to build his network and persona, and he quickly garnered a lot of attention. Right, that guy wants in the stream. Hi. Happy Hanukkah. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Where are you guys from? No, it wasn't long before Jeffrey gained a massive fan base being called the Marilyn Manson of makeup in MySpace. It was all about the emo scene culture back then, and this group was definitely looking for someone to idolize. And Jeffrey, will he fit the bill? In 2006, Jeffrey, he was named the most connected MySpace personality, and he had over a million friends on the platform. Now, Jeffrey was one of the first to see the opportunity of transforming an online following into a career, and he turned MySpace into his nine to five. He interacted with fans from all over the world, hang out with bands, and as a result, he too started to experiment with music. Now, if you go back and listen, you might think that some of Jeffrey's music was trash, but he already had loyal listeners thanks to all of his MySpace followers who seemed to love his electronic and pop sound. Now, Jeffrey, he started Popsicle Records and he continued to release music, including the studio album Beauty Killer in 2009. He also landed a spot on Warp Tour that same year. Now, his first and only studio album Beauty Killer from 2009 featured a collab with Nicki Minaj and it even charted at number seven on the Billboard Electronic Album Charts. But with songs titled We Want CNT, Eyelash Curlers, and Butcher Knives, and Legs Up, well, I guess that might be part of the answer as to why it didn't go mainstream. Just a guess. In 2010, Jeffrey even signed to Akon's label, Convict Music, and Akon described him as the next Lady Gaga. But after a little while, Jeffrey, he left the music biz altogether while Akon, he was facing some legal issues. Now later, Jeffrey, he would call signing to Akon's label the biggest mistake he's ever made. Now despite this flop in his music career, well, Jeffrey, he continued to leverage his online fame into more mainstream appearances. Nowadays, Jeffrey, he's pretty versatile and he wears many hats. He's a makeup artist, a beauty YouTuber, an entrepreneur, a singer, a DJ, a songwriter, a model, and more. But years back, when he was still trying to get his name out there, he was appearing on shows like LA Inc. with Kat Von D, who at the time, well, those two, they were like BFFs. Not anymore. You <laughs> look so cool it now. It looks so it's real. You. I don't know how she has the skills to make something look so realistic, but it's it was like, whoa. Ultimately, Jeffrey and Kat Von D, they would go on to have a famous feud that became so public and so severe, well, it severed all in any chance of the two ever being friends again. Now, according to Kat Von D, their feud was due to Jeffrey's drug use, racism, and bullying, but that's just Kat's side of the story. And Jeffrey says she detached from him after he launched his own cosmetic line. A little bit of jealousy. Yeah, probably both true, I don't know. Being aggressive and choosing sides without ever hearing me speak, that's fine, that's on you. But to come on every social media platform and attack my friends and my boyfriend and my cousins and my mother is so upsetting and I never knew you would take something this far. So I am going to go down the points of everything that she said in her video and all the stuff that people have been attacking me with and I'm just gonna lay it all on the table. Speaking of Cosmetic Line, which was the next big chapter in Jeffrey's life, in 2014, he launched his online makeup store and brand, Jeffree Star Cosmetics, for which he spent his entire life savings to get it off the ground. Now with no more music career and no money at the time, well Jeffrey, he had no idea where his future was heading. And he certainly had no idea that Jeffree Star Cosmetics would soon become the multi-million dollar company it is today. The next shade we're gonna be swatching is this beautiful chocolate brown. 
This one is called Dominatrix. I wanna wear this to Target, <laughs> I wanna wear this to Ikea. Although Jeffrey's YouTube channel says he joined in 2006, he didn't start using the platform consistently until 2015. So he was technically a late bloomer. And for someone who's now known as one of the highest earning creators and banks over 17 million annually from YouTube alone, well you probably wouldn't have guessed that he started so late. Now a year later in 2016, the channel already had surpassed daily views of over 1 million and he had clocked in 2 million subscribers. <sighs> Dear Diary, I wish there was more than two genders, cause I'm getting really bored. Now Jeffrey was smart and he used his videos to promote his cosmetic line and also for what he does best, makeup tutorials, and Jeffrey, he still does those today, as well as his infamous product reviews, vlogs, and more. Hi, I just rubbed some dirt from my yard on my forehead. How are you doing? That's because I don't ever review or use Too Faced on my channel anymore. Oh, this looks kind of nasty. Jesus Christ. There's the tea. On that. Now these days, his channel, it boasts over 16 million subscribers and over 2 billion views. Now Jeffrey, he's considered one of the richest and most successful beauty influencers of all time, and Bustle Magazine called him a musician and one-time MySpace celeb that reinvented himself in the YouTube makeup tutorial space. Now you already know of one other uber-rich beauty influencer out there whose name is Kylie Jenner, which kind of reminds me of a lot of Jeffrey's drama. Yeah, his beef with Kylie, it had to do with her copying his product packaging and also him dissing one of her makeup brushes because he said it was of bad quality. Oh, I wouldn't mess with the case. Um, but overall for $360 plus tax and plus shipping, there is no way in hell I'm gonna recommend to my audience that you guys buy basically a $400 brush set that you cannot touch or feel because of course she's only an e-commerce brand. I know some people think that's shady. I just think that it's smart and fair for you guys because this brush set with this cheap old vegan aluminum fucking silver is just not worth the price point. I definitely think that you are paying for an overhyped celebrity name and the price. I know, we're all just like, the price. I just don't think it's worth it. Now, over the years, Jeffrey's list of celebrity feuds has become pretty long. Aside from Kylie and Kat, he's butted heads with the likes of Nikki Tutorials, Laura Lee, Kim Kardashian, James Charles, and those are only a few. But as they say in show business, any publicity is good publicity, and these headline-making feuds, well, they've only further spread his notoriety. Now he continues to reach new levels of fame each and every year. In 2018, Jeffrey was featured in Shane Dawson's docu-series and the episode was titled, The Truth About Jeffree Star. Your worst point was before this. You were living on somebody's couch and then you got some money from MySpace to live here. Yes, and then spent all that and went, still had probably, how do I articulate it? Like, um, like it, it's, it was worse than when I was sleeping on someone's couch because of all the, you know, like how do I say that? Like you went in debt. Yeah, exactly. So I think when I spent all the MySpace money and went into debt, it was far worse than sleeping on someone's couch and living and working at the mall. Like it was way worse. So oh yeah, because you're in here in debt with no job. Yeah. Now this led to the Secret World of Jeffree Star, a five-part docu series created by Shane himself, and it followed the life and career of Jeffree as Shane got familiar with his world. Good morning, everyone. Wait, so this, this is so he's what is this one? Delicious. Delicious Daddy Diva Diamond and Drama. Delicious Diva Diamond Daddy and Drama. Yes. They're very well trained. They listen very like they're the best. Well, the whole idea was obviously a hit, considering this year in 2019, the two embarked on a second YouTube docu-series together, The Beautiful World of Jeffree Star, again created by Shane, which followed Jeffree's life once again. This time, they documented Jeffree and Shane designing their makeup collection together. Wow. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. Oh my god. What do you think, guys? Oh Holy sh**. Oh my god. I love it. Oh. The Beautiful World of Jeffree Star, it ran for seven episodes from October 2019 till the end of November 2019. And the series, it generated a total of 130 million views. Also, the trailer alone, it got a whopping 10 million within like a week. Damn, I miss getting them type of views. And that makeup collection Jeffrey and Shane was working on, well, that was the conspiracy collection, which ended up selling at 1 million units of product in only 30 minutes. It also set new records for both Jeffree Star Cosmetics and the beauty industry altogether. Now it's obvious that Jeffree has come a long way since being bankrupt and starting his cosmetic line. Now he makes the list of a top few highest paid YouTubers each and every year. Now Jeffrey has worked his balls off 
Not literally. Anyway, to build his empire worth over $50 million. And I'm sure he's only gonna keep climbing. As for the rest of the story, well, I guess we'll have to wait and see because this is before they are famous. My name is Michael McCredden. We make all sorts of celebrity bios here for you on this channel. If you're new to the party, be sure to subscribe. Let us know who's next in the comments down below. And I'll see you guys in another video. Whew, that was a long one. Thumb!